Hi everyone, I'm Vic. Today I'm going to talk about a new broadcasting software, Meld Studio, that is known among Mac OS users. It's coming to Windows and it's currently in beta. I did ask for permission on making the content for the beta before making this video. Now, the beta is going to be in this version of 0.7.1.0-A399A9A46 while making this video. Setting up is fairly easy. If you've used other open broadcasting software such as OBS, it'll be a breeze. So with that, let's get started. First, you want to select File and then Preferences. Now from here, you're going to be setting up to whatever configuration you prefer. You can do 4K, 1440p, 1080p, 864p, 720p, Portrait 4K, Portrait 1080p, and Portrait 720p. Portrait modes are going to be those verticals. All right. Now the other thing is, you will have to copy whatever stream server, which is usually the ideal one, so it, it gives you this here, um, and your stream key. Never share your stream key. Your video bitrate, most of these only require 60, uh, 6,000 kbps, but such as YouTube, you can go up to higher. And if you're a partner with Twitch or Kick, I believe that you can give you even more to do. All right, so you can choose to have a hardware encoder and uh, obviously you're going to save your recordings. Personally, I use the MKV. It's kind of like lossless for video, so you can always convert it. You can always use it. There's an, even an editor called DaVinci Resolve. It's free unless you pay for the studio version and you can always edit your videos. All right, and you can even save your screenshots. You can add plugins. Currently, I don't think there's any. Um, you can go ahead and go to advanced. You can set up a WebSocket server if you want for remote connections. There's going to be audio. Personally, audio is going to be a lot of fun to play with, and we're going to go over that in a whole different spectrum, but it'll always go to your default. I am going to be using Wavelink with this, so for people who are Elgato Dream Deck Plus dock XLR users, or a Wave XLR, or a Wave microphone, this is going to be very simple to follow. All right, there's smart guides. So in other words, like when you're snapping in a particular video or capture or overlay, you're going to see it in this particular color. And obviously the transitions. Now you can't do your own ringers, but move is probably one of the best ones to do between scenes. And I have it set up in quadratic at 1000 milliseconds and at midpoint. Personally, I find this to be the sweet spot when it comes to changing and you'll see it when we set it up. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to our scenes. So in this case, when I'm doing a scene, for example, I'm live streaming to Twitch, I'm gonna call this starting. And we're gonna add the layer. So the first thing that I usually do in a starting scene is I am going to add a video device because you can't really do a capture device but you can do a video device which will pull your capture card and now I can go ahead and size this up to the screen oh I have to drag and drop so you see how it simply just fits right there and I can rename this so I'm going to name this 4k pro all right that's good now, the next thing I want to do is add an overlay to it. So, in my case, it's a media file. And I am going to go to my animated packages. I'm going to go to screens, animated. I can do blank backgrounds or I can go to starting. And the thing is, sometimes it'll wipe across the screen and then it'll still have the wording there. So I haven't figured that part out yet to have it go with the actual screen. In this case, I'm going to go to blank backgrounds. Not what I'm looking for. So let's try the ending one. 
Though I always choose a transparent, that way you can see the game over it. And in this case, you know what, let me start up a game so that way you can see what it looks like while it's going to be starting. All right, so what I can do, since I don't like the way that it looks right here, I can actually turn it around just simply dragging and dropping. That way you're able to see like the bottom of the actual video feed. Sorry, I'm turning on the video feed right now. It might take a minute. There we go. Sure, we'll look up Sega while we're doing this. All right. I honestly wasn't expecting it to do that. Okay, so I don't need this track for this media source, so I can delete it, right? What I'm gonna do is rename it and I'm gonna call this starting. Then I'm gonna add an image over it. And it's gonna be under titles. I know I have the stream starting right there. I'm gonna label this start title. And that's it for my starting scene. Now I wanna add a new scene. Now I could go here into the audio just like I do with all of my streams and have some kind of audio run through. And in that case, I can go ahead and select a device if I wanted to actually just run it through with like my Spotify or something, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, as a matter of fact, we're gonna add one more media file. So let's go ahead and delete this track. Let's go here, let's go to media source. And go to my stream, music. And yeah, I do use copyright free music. That is thanks to stream beats like made by Harris Heller. Hello. Really, really cool dude. All right. So there's my media source right here, right? And I'm going to relabel this to music. All right. So I should be able to lock everything in place and my starting scene is already set up. Now, the other cool thing that I don't want to omit is when I am selecting, for example, my starting overlay right here, I can change the opacity to look like paper if I wanted. Why I would want to do this, you know what, it looks cool. So we'll go at like maybe 80%, no, 70%, no, we'll go 60%. You know what, I think the sweet spot is 75%. And it looks like you can still see the game, but you know that the stream is starting. Doesn't that look pretty awesome? All right, so the next scene, what I usually do, is my live scene. And if we switch back, look how it does the transition. So even if you have a stringer, those stringers are not included currently, you could actually just do that and it fades really beautifully. All right, so the next one is usually going to be my live scene. So I would rename this to live, for example. And this is kind of where the audio is going to take a, a little bit of a focal point. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my audio is set up, right? So the first things first, let's go ahead and select my device. Now my input devices are microphones, capture cards. My output devices would be the channels that I set up here in Wavelink, which are these, with the exception of my microphone. All right, so for here, I want to make sure that one, my 4K Pro is being added. So I'm going to do the audio right here. I can rename this to 4K Pro. It's that simple. All right. And uh, there is Stream Deck integration, and I can set that up with my Stream Deck Plus, but that's probably going to be another video because right now I'm just walking you through how to set things up here in Melt. And if you see, it's very simple. But I do want another audio track, right? And uh, that next track is going to be... Let's go ahead and call it my microphone. So mic effects. And I'm gonna select another input device and I am gonna select my Wavelink microphone effects. Now the reason why I'm selecting the microphone effects is because I am running VSTs um, and that is going to be through Wavelink right here. 
all of these. I do have my own preset available with the Elgato EQ, but I alternate my EQs just to test out the audio to see what I like better, if I need to tweak anything, if I need to upload anything under the makers. So if you ever see a change, you'll see it. Um, let's go ahead and carry on here. So I've got my microphone, I've got my game audio, but I want to maybe bring Spotify in, right? Or browsers. So in this case, I'm going to go to output devices and here are all my Wavelink channels. So in this case, I also play PC games. So if I wanted to add my Wavelink game, for example, I could rename this. I'm getting a little too click happy. So I can name this game just for simple simplicity's sake. And it's there. Now, usually with games, you want to probably bring the audio down a bit. Let me see what I have it like in my... I'm sure that... 20, you know what, we'll just put it at 20 for now. You always want your microphone to be louder than your game, if I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, that's good. Okay, then the next thing is going to be music, right? So let's go ahead and add music. And we're gonna select our device. We're gonna go to output device. And I am gonna look for wavelength music right here. So if I ever wanted to run Spotify or something, obviously royalty-free music, I can do so. All right, next is going to be the next audio track. And this is going to be voice chat. Because there are some games that I play where I'm able to bring my buddies on and I wanna be able to either hear them or mute them or bring them on stream. And I'm gonna go here to output device again. And I'm gonna go to Wavelink voice chat. Now, if I wanted to add alerts or um, alerts could come through directly here, just like you would in OBS audio source, or you could set them up to route to Wavelink system or sound effects. Uh, it, it really depends on you. Like if you have a soundboard, you would go here and you would rename this to SFX that's what a soundboard is, is a sound effects. That's what the acronym is for. And we're gonna go to output device, wavelength, sound effects. Now usually I wanna bring the sound effects a little bit lower than me, not too much, but lower, so that way everybody can hear it, but they can still hear me if I'm still talking. All right, and the next audio track that we're gonna do is going to be, I think the browser, let me double check. Output device. I'm looking to see if I want to bring the browser on. We did music, sound effects, voice chat. You know what, we'll do system. And the reason why is just in case we want to route the alerts, right? So we'll do system. So that's going to be all of the audio channels that I would prefer to come through here. And now we can actually start setting up our live. So from here, I'm gonna go again to video capture device. I am gonna select my capture card again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this till it snaps into place and lock it. Now, the reason why you wanna lock it is so when you come back here, you're not basically moving anything, right? That, that's the whole point of locking a particular overlay. So we're gonna rename this to for a pro. Now, here's the thing. It may, on some of these particular overlays that you bring in, such as a media source, it may have an audio tied to it. And if you don't want that audio and you'd rather route it here, you can delete that track like we showed earlier. So from here, I would also add my camera, but because my camera is actually in OBS filming meld, I probably won't be successful in putting my camera in two places at once. But we can attempt it. Definitely. I could just like crop an image of me in there, but we're gonna carry on here. But if you are gonna do it, it would come here and you would choose Facecam Pro, for example. Now, if you noticed, it's blank. That's because it's being used by OBS. 
So that's why you see this caution sign here. All right, we're gonna delete the layer because we don't really need it. And this is gonna be pretty much my setup for when I'm live because I only usually just do live with gameplay. Now I could duplicate this, right? Check it out. I could duplicate this and be like, nah, some days I just feel like not being on camera, right? So this would be live rename no cam. And then I could rename this as in live cam. So if I didn't want to be on camera and then I add the device right here to video device and I decide, you know what? I do want my camera to be right here when I go live. Well, it'll be there. I'll have to configure that later, but that's totally fine. So as you can see, there's a camera there. Under this one, no camera here, and then starting. And you see how that transition is seamless? I love it. And then you can see right here, there's a little icon that tells you that music is playing. So it says loop playback, right? Play when scene becomes active, which is what we want. Um, we got to make sure that we don't want you see how it's playing right here? It tells you what's playing. We want to make sure that nothing else is playing in the background. So it doesn't look like that anything else with the exception of the microphone is. Um, and I think we're good there. All right, so everything looks good here. Now the next scene that I usually do is a be right back screen, right? So be right back. And again, the audio, everything transfers over in the audio mixer. So it doesn't just hop around. Like it, it goes based off of what you've set up based off of your scene. Now, because this is going to be something that's an audio mixer overall for your stream, you are gonna wanna make sure that you are muting and unmuting when you're actually switching scenes. Um, I haven't figured out how to get it tied to just one specific thing. But if I go here, you can see we only have options of video device, display capture, media source, image, browser, duplicator, text, markdown, and rectangle. So there's no audio specific to a scene. The audio is going to be specific here, which means it's across the board, with the exception of maybe doing a media source per your scene. And the media source is usually like an MP3 file, a video animated overlay, as you can see right here. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our Be Right Back screen because we're going to be doing the same thing. Now, I don't remember the link for my own. Oh, I know, y'all are seeing like my, Di my Diablo stuff. I don't remember the link for my clips, but... Um, See if I can find it real quick. You ever type something in Google and it pulls up something entirely different? That's exactly what happened to me. Okay. Let me go ahead and see if it'll copy. Oh, sweet. Okay, so from here, I would go to browser, right? Because I'm going to actually add a browser source in here. All right, so I can go here to... Bit to Canvas. You can always right-click to do this stuff. But what I want to do is change the link. And I keep forgetting, everything is to the right and meld. So. Anytime that you're looking for properties, it's going to be right here. And what we're going to do is rename this to Clips. So this is my channel Clips, right? This, this is what I do. Um, and then I have a Be Right Back overlay. So I'm going to lock this in place. And there should be audio coming from here on this browser source, but I don't see the audio actually matching down here for the browser. Oh, here we go. Add an audio track for the source, right? So as I'm doing the clip, oh, that was last night. That was so much fun, by the way. 
Um, as I'm doing this, here's the audio clip right here for the browser. So make sure that you are selecting the tabs and you're looking to the right when you're using meld here in Windows for the beta. All right, so now we're gonna add our overlay, which is a media source. And I need to go back to my overlays. And we're gonna go to our animated package. And what's it, screens, animated. Be right back. And we're looking for the transparent one. All right, and we have agreed that 75 was the sweet spot for the opacity, right? So you can still see everything, which I think is really cool. Um, and it gives it like a paper-like effect, but it also you're able to see what's going on, but you also know that I'm not here, right? Now we're gonna relabel this as a uh, be right back. And again, lock it in place once it's there. Now we're gonna add an image. We're gonna go to titles and it's gonna say be right back. Ideally it should fit, like the way that this package was designed is designed with 1080p in mind as most streams are 1080p. And we're gonna lock it in place and we're gonna rename it uh, be right back title. I can spell today. And obviously we're gonna lock this in place too. All right, now if I wanted to be fancy with the titles, I could do this too, check it out. And it's very paper-like. So if I wanted to go back to my starting scene, right? And these are things that, little details that you can change along the way. And it's very easy to do. Oh no, that's not what we're doing. But you see how it kind of fades into where it gives it like a paper-like uh, vibe? And then you could literally switch to be right back. And you see how smooth that transition is? It's awesome. All right, and then the last scene that I usually have when I go live is going to be, and we're adding a new scene, ending. Right, so starting, be right back, ending, and then obviously live if I wanna be on camera or not. Um, it just depends, like sometimes you just have that day where you're, you're like, you know what, I wanna be online, but I also don't wanna be on camera. And I have moments like that a lot lately. Um, but I like being on camera when I'm feeling good about myself, but some days I'm like, I just want to game, but I also want to hang out online. And sometimes I'll either lurk in Discord to do that, or I'll be live streaming like the actual gameplay. And uh, it's fun either way, like as long as you're having fun, that's the, the whole point of streaming, at least live streaming. Now if you're making content, you do want to make sure that you have your key points and that you stick to those things. Sometimes you can ad lib and just kind of veer off a little bit, but as long as you come back to what you're doing on your content, that's all that matters. All right, so the ending screen, right? Uh, let's see, I'm going to do a video device again. Now I can do this because I have it where I toggle between PC game and uh, my capture card. I still keep this as my base, right? So if I wanted, I could just put fit to canvas, click it here, rename it 4K Pro. Like that doesn't change. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add the overlay again. So from here, I am going to go to media source. There's greens, animated, and we're gonna go to ending. Now we've we've used the ending one twice, and what I'm gonna do is put this at 75, because I'm really liking this look. And I'm gonna rename this. But if you notice, I didn't have to rotate it, right? So now you're able to see like the ending scene. And we're gonna label this ending. And we're gonna go ahead and snap that into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the image, which is going to be the title. And there should be stream ending. It's perfectly at the bottom, but you know what? We like the paper look, so we're gonna give it that. And we're gonna rename this ending title. All right, and I usually like to play music at the end as well. So I am gonna go to media source again, and I am gonna go to my stream. I'm gonna go to music. And I am gonna choose the same song I did earlier, right? I'm gonna rename it Music. And I'm gonna lock it in place. Not that I need to when it comes to audio, but if you see, as we switch scenes from the clips 
that's going to be playing here to the ending, it's gonna be here. Now we do have a bit of audio right here, so I wanna see all tracks. And I wanna see the Be Right Back one real quick here. So for this, we actually don't need the audio track for that. For ending, we don't need that either. So when I switch to ending, right here, because it's looping this right here as an audio source, we don't need that as an audio source. We do need it to loop the playback though. So I can go Be Right Back, and you'll be able to see what's going on on the Be Right Back screen. And I can go to the ending, and it's gonna tell you my ending scene is playing music. don't need that as a track. There we go, there's the music. There's so many audio things, like that's kind of one of the things that I wish they would change, but that's feedback, right? And I can actually let them know that, that I would love to put the audio tracks per scene as opposed to as a whole. But the beautiful thing is you are able to see all of your audio tracks here. And it's a very simple thing. So like, for example, if I pull up Spotify, I don't have Spotify coming through OBS, so you're not gonna hear it. But if I am playing, for example, Harris Heller, look at that. It's coming through right here. And you're able to see that music is coming through as you're, you know, chilling. If I wanted to go to live, no camera, I'm still playing music. It's routing that music through Wavelink. Now you cannot control the audio from Wavelink in Meld, okay? you have to control it directly through melt. And that's why you saw me playing with these sliders. Hold on, let me turn off Spotify. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I wanna put that disclaimer and emphasis on it because I have another video where I talk about Wavelink using OBS. And a lot of people are thinking that you can control Wavelink audio through OBS and that's not true. Wavelink is going to be basically an audio hub for you to use, right? Think of it as software that controls all audio on your computer. Now, if you're going to be doing the inputs and the outputs like this here, you're going to still want to control the audio directly from the software. So in this case, to control the audio levels in Meld, you would be doing it directly in Meld here. Or if you have a stream deck, right? If you have a stream deck, you know what, let's do a new page real quick here. There is a meld find it. plugin. Oh, do I not have it? Hold on, y'all. Give me just a second. All right, it took me a second, but I got it here. So there is a plugin that you're going to download, which I thought I had it installed and I did not. So it's installing. It tells you what version of Stream Deck it requires, right? And now we can use the Meld Studio plugin. So if I wanted to control the audio from here, I can mute or unmute. In this case, what I want to see is the dials, right? So Meld has some adjust volume. Again, it is a Meld plugin that you control the audio for your stream in Meld. This does not control the Wavelink audio. If you want to control the Wavelink audio, you're going to download the Wavelink plugin to control it. Again, you cannot control the volume from Meld in Wavelink. You have to do it directly from Meld. So that's where this comes in handy. So in this case, it's going to ask you what your source is, right? And in this case, I want to probably control music. I think what I'm going to do is it says meters or percentage. I like to see the percentage. I understand the decibels, but the percentage sometimes is a lot easier. And we can do the step size, which is great. Honestly, I don't think that's the right music one. There we go. That's the one that controls like the Spotify or whatever. So you can control the volume and meld. 
And if you look, let's look at the bottom here and we'll see which one it's going to control. So that's the one that we have set up to Wavelength Music. And if, if you're not looking, look at the, the mouse pointer right here. And you'll see it move up and down. So that's how you're gonna control the audio for meld for your stream, okay? <laughs> I'm only showing you how it works so that way you have a clear understanding. This controls the audio in meld. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's helpful. Anyways, I wanted to say thank you for watching because this is actually coming to a close for meld and a very simple setup. Take care, everybody. Oh, one more thing. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more content. Thanks again.